Good morning, gentlemen. I uh, want to show y'all exactly how I set up my dollar-proof traps, and then we're going to go out and, and catch a few uh, catch coons in them. This is just to uh, show you guys the system that I have came up with over the last few years of using dollar-proof traps, and I'm going to show you exactly why. So what I have is three of the PCS Outdoors Featherlight Dogproof Trap. This has become my favorite trap because the aluminum body does not rust. It will hold any paint color you put on it without couldn't being able to take it right off. Um, I use, I just leave them aluminum. They're great right out of the box. The springs, the dog is stainless steel. The chain obviously is not stainless. Maybe eventually I will uh, find some small stainless steel chain to upgrade these and make my own swivels. That's a future project. But I actually threw away like three dog proofs this spring when I was digging through my bucket and I went out to set them for something and I had some that was so rusted up and crudded up that I was not going to sit there and waste my time fucking with them to get them back right when I knew that after a short period of time they would be screwed up again. So even though I have some Z traps and I have a few other different brands mixed in there, I've tried just about all of the brands that are on the market. These have become my favorite. They're just very low maintenance. Now, like any trap that you get, you know, they're all mass produced. There's little odds and ends you'll find. Like sometimes you'll get one that's the dog is too long, and if you don't trim the dog on it, if you don't trim the dog on it, then your trigger won't set properly. This one's perfect. But to uh, so check that. But generally, this is the way they come. A lot of people. I know that, that don't know any better, they set them up and they'll just use a stake or something or wire these off to something just like this. I have developed several different ways that I like to run based on where I'm going to be setting the trap. Now, I used to use them a little bit longer, but if you want to run, if you want to run these uh, off of stakes, generally if I'm going to stake a trap, it's in an open area and I'm going to stake several of them. So I don't want the chains too long because I want this coon not to be able to reach this dog proof or this other critter that's in this other dog proof. So I'll keep the chain a little bit short. I'll add six inches of this number two twist link chain to this trap. And then, um, a single stake swivel. That's all you need on a on a coon is a single swivel or a single a single stake holder. So, and I put my trap tag on a key ring and I'll stick it on this chain. I'll do that here in a little bit. So this is a this is a kind of a unique setup that I like to do for certain locations. I add nine inches of chain to this one. put a quick link on here. This is a little stainless steel quick link. Throw my little trap tag on a key ring on here and put this uh, snap link, a uh, snap kind of, hell I don't know what you call them. Uh, put this on here so that I normally what I use this for and I have these set up for is for like a barbed wire or chain link fence where I can just walk up even with gloves on that's the important thing otherwise you can just use the if you're not wearing gloves, you can just use a little quick link, you know, but when you got gloves on in the winter, it's finicky. So I'll put these little snap pipe thingies on there and go hook it to a fence and set the trap. I use nine inches of chain just because like on a barbed wire fence or something, you might, you know, it's going to be up a little bit and it's going to take some of your, some of your slack, but that's a pretty good system. Also, for those of you that run drags, normally you would have chain already attached to your drag, you just hook this to your drag chain, or I don't know if that would do it or not. I don't run drags. I've got a few laying around here. I never use them for anything. With this system, I hardly ever find anywhere that I can't put a trap. So, but uh, and the other thing this is good for is like you can take a cable extension, wrap it around a tree, and put this in both ends of it and still set it like that. So these are pretty useful. That one's going in this box. 
So this particular one, this is how I have most of mine set up. I take 12 inches of number two twist link chain. Some handy dandy uh, crimping tool. What this is, is I believe this is 5 30 seconds. I think I ordered wrong size by mistake some time ago and it's been setting up there. But that, uh, these little things are 5 30 seconds. This is stainless steel cable. I cut it 13 to 14 inches to be able to make a loop. And because this is a little bit thicker than what I normally use, it's kind of it's pretty stiff. But I make a loop with it. Oh, you're going to be difficult since I'm on video, right? There we go. It's not always the easiest thing, but there. Oh, shoot, I forgot. When I make my loop, I put my little, uh, my tag on there too. So my tag didn't get... Uh, all beat up. It doesn't get wrapped around the chain like everybody else just wraps it around the chain. Well, then you got to unwrap it. And it's usually covered with mud. Hell, so half the time you can't even tell it's on there. So like the way I do it, I can at least tell at a glance that my tag is still on my trap. So, oh, I don't even know if this is a, a proper grip on here. The cool thing about this stainless steel ring is it's going to last forever. Whereas if you just use regular old cable that you get from the store and it's galvanized and it gets all uh, starts to rust on the inside, it's hard for you to know it. But the thing with this, generally I want it to where I can pass an unset trap through it. And then I'll take this and put it around something like a sapling. Usually I tie it off to a tree or a small tree or a root. And that's how I do it. I'll just pull this through, pull it tight, and set it. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to take all my dog proofs out, and we'll go set them in a few places, and throw some cat food in them, and see what we catch tonight. I only have one night to do this, so hopefully we'll get a few catches. I'm going to try to show you an example of each and every way that I can set these things. Guys, the very first stop on our trip today is my mom's backyard. During the summer, they had a rabid raccoon killed in this neighborhood. Uh, we've got rabies all over the county this year. A lot of foxes have been attacking people and um, during the spring one of my mom's neighbors actually had a raccoon walk up in her house in the full daytime and about three days ago my mother was sitting in her sunroom with the door cracked for the cats to go out. Raccoon walks up into the house. So I know these coons are most likely carrying rabies and I'm gonna try to go ahead and I'm gonna put a couple traps here and and try to take care of that issue do not want want them running around the hood so pretty simple one rebar stake 18 inches Set it, and this is the brand new one. Uh. Just a little cat food. Don't even, I don't go past the trigger. Keep it under the trigger. These are pull only. A lot of people think that you catch more coons with a push pull. I have not found that to be true. I, I have no problem with uh, the pull only traps. When I first started, I thought that push pull was better. And I've got a lot of Z traps, and I've noticed no improvement whatsoever. Plus, the trigger mechanism on them is a lot more finicky, I, would, I should say, whereas these are pretty well a lot easier to work with. Some of the Z traps are really hard to get set right because they have an enamel coating that's on the uh, actual trigger mechanism and it gets real slippery and you get a brand new z-trap you get several of them that last they like to fire off by themselves pretty easily let me put one more of these over here well out of the range of any uh, of each other so that the same coon can't get in both of them
That's all there is to it. So in order to give y'all an example of a barbed wire fence set up, I'm behind my neighbor's house. This is the one, this is the trap we just made up. Put clip right there. Those of you that live places where the ground freezes, be sure that this is loose enough that the animal will be able to detach the trap from the ground. And you don't want him at an awkward angle all night. Alright, let's go find another spot. Now this is the other one that we made that has the 12 inches of chain and then the stainless steel loop. Now I normally do this in the trees, in the woods with the trees, but this is uh this is how this is designed to work. So if you don't you don't have to clip it to the wire if you have this particular setup. That's going nowhere. high bank trail I know is used by raccoons, possums, foxes, uh, even armadillos. I've seen them all on this particular little trail. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a dog proof right there on that tree using the loop system. Here's a Z-trap. We'll try that one. Why I can't fucking stand those things. You get one that's finicky it is a fucking pain in the ass. There we go. A lot of these roots that you find in the creek bank bottoms, they're pretty soft wood and they're really easy for a coon to chew on. And if they're real small, you just rip them out. So select carefully, don't use anything smaller than like a two inch diameter. And if we catch one here tonight, this will be chewed up pretty good. I wouldn't use the same root twice. This is a Traps USA pool only dog proof. Kind of a cheaper trap. I think I up a couple of these off eBay a couple years ago and they've been alright. Cool lonely, real simple. No issues with it. And you see how fast this particular attachment system is. It's way faster when I'm not doing a video. It takes no time to hook these up. You can just find a nice thick root or a sapling. Now when you're tying off to the sapling, be sure you don't use any of this crap. This is, uh, hell, I don't even know what this is. But, uh, as you can see, it's really pithy on the inside. It's not real strong shit. Coon could tear it up. The only time I tie one of these, if I tie a dog proof for a coon to one of these, I try to get one about twice as large as this. They're a little bit stronger then. But, Privet or pretty much any other tree this size is fine. But these little pithy weak things, no good. So you get down in here and you don't have the right size sapling, you know, in the three to four inch range. 
and you have a tree like this that's right next to some coon tracks. Now, we had a heavy rain last night, so I'm not finding a lot of sign. I'm having to set based on my experiences where they usually are. So, uh, so let me show you how I set around one of the bigger trees. So in one of my buckets, I keep a, I keep a little selection of, of cables that I can use for extending, extension cables. And I just, oh, this one's perfect. I wrap it around here. And the dog proofs that I have that have my little snap link made up on it, this one's got a stake adapter on it. Let's throw that back in the bag. And there you go. Easy peasy. All right, on to the next one. Morning, folks. So, my first one of the day, and uh, I'm facing right into the freaking sun, but. One drawback to putting it around barbed wire fence, if you're a fur trapper, you don't want to do it. They will leave hair everywhere. Me, personally, in South Alabama, with a pelt that might be worth $2 if it sells, um, I'm not messing with it for, you know, if, you want, if you're a nuisance trapper or trapping for meat, no big deal. Normally, normally I like to show myself with a live animal before I dispatch it. Like I said, this year, rabies is very widespread, so I'm not taking any chances this year with getting really close and and having a conversation with the animal when I get to him. So I went ahead and popped him when I got here and then set up the camera. So uh, let's go check. Uh, let's go check another one. So this little guy is the last of my catches today, eh, facing into the freaking sun again. This is kind of a bonus coon. This is where I parked the truck yesterday, and I went in here and, and made a made a set. And I come back and I said, well, you know what? I've caught coons in this little spot before. I'm just going to go ahead and throw one in right here by the truck. And this is what happens. This is a nice, easy-to-see trap from a distance. They're walking through this open area. They're going to see it. So, uh... You know, you sometimes catch one in places you don't really have a reason to set. But uh, it's really not a bad spot. The river is right over there and all behind us. Anyway, let's go check the uh, last one. I want to show you something. So remember this set that I made using the extension cable around a tree? And I had a game camera watching this set, actually. I come up this morning, I find my trap tipped over and, uh, and empty. And I actually have it on video of the coon playing with this thing. What he did was he, he didn't quite pull the lever all the way. It is just barely hanging. It almost fired. He just, you know, I had the dog set all the way down in there. And he pulled it most of the way, apparently. But it's just barely caught. And that rarely happens. And I could probably take my dogs and file uh, a little bit of a tiny little bevel on the, on the end of them. And prevent that from happening again. But... Yeah, so I missed one. That, like I said, that's very rare. I've never, I can't remember the last time that's happened to me. So, but it is pretty cool. I have it on video, and I'll throw that in here.
So guys, I was 30% uh, on the day. You know, I only had 10 traps out. Now, if you look at the video and time it, I sat there and talked, and still, so, uh, most of the sets only took a minute to make. Most of them are under a minute. If you just, if you already have it in your head where you're going to put your trap, and you're walking a line, you can throw these things out in less than a minute each, pretty much all of them. Maybe the ones that take a stake a little bit longer, but generally under a minute. So finding your location is, is the time consuming part. A real trapper could have set 50 dog proofs in a day, no problem, because they're so fast. In my case, I have to drag around a tripod and, and uh, a lot of other equipment for filming and everything, and I have to cut a lot of brush out of the way for my cameras to be able to record it, and then I have to set up the game cameras. It's very time consuming, so that kind of limits what I can do catch-wise and set-wise. Which is okay, I have limited access to property anyway. So I hope you guys learned a trick or two that will help you out on your own lines, and I'll see you guys on the next one.